Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to a brand new video here today and some more F1 My Team content. Today we are here for the Japanese Grand Prix. Before we jump into it though guys, I want to get this plug out of the way because it's massive and bigger than ever. We could potentially hit 50,000 subscribers today. So if you're new to the channel guys and you haven't done so already, hit that red subscribe button. It massively helps me out. And if you are a sub of the channel, if you want to recommend me to a friend or to someone that you think might enjoy my content, then by all means guys, I'd massively appreciate it appreciate it and we're so close to this massive milestone now but guys that aside let's get to today's episode and let's see what the video has in store here we are then guys once again in the laptop and you can see the weather forecast this weekend no rain expected not a cloud in the sky we are still the second fastest team and we brought some upgrades this weekend and hopefully We'll be bringing some more soon because we do have, I believe, a major engine upgrade in the works. So hopefully we'll keep closing that gap to Mercedes. But at this point, we've got to start considering and looking at our options in terms of maybe starting to shift our focus towards next season to really mount a title challenge from the get-go. With that said, guys, we jump into practice one here at Japan. And I've got to say... I love this track, you know, it's my favourite one on the calendar. We go from Sochi to Russia, probably my least favourite track to my favourite, and I absolutely love it. So I'm really, really happy to be here, and the car felt great. We went quickest in practice out of everybody, but there were some negatives. It seems like we really badly lack some one-lap pace. Um, the setup is very unstable over one lap on the soft tyres, so it's going to be tricky because on the long runs, the car felt good, so... We're going to see how that pans out. We do gain a pretty decent amount of R&D points. Um, no real difference on the acclaim though. So hopefully we'll try and get level 15 today. Uh, we're pretty close to that. But with that said, we now move into qualifying here at Japan. And this is when it all, you know, balls up and gets tasty as everyone turns their engines up and we get ready for the final part of qualifying. So let's see how this goes. I'm very much looking forward to it. So let's get this action underway. First of all, Q1. And this was my first time lap. I got held up a little bit here by the Alpha. Um, just giving me a bit of dirty air, struggling to turn into that second Degna and I lost about a tenth or two maybe through there. Um, on the way we continue on to finish the lap and now making our way into the Casio Triangle. The final chicane just missing the apex a little bit there on the right hander. Then quickly back on the power as you make our way through the final corner and run up to the line. We are going to go P7 at the time ahead of both Red Bulls actually which is pretty decent but behind Danny Kofia and eventually we got pushed down to P17 so this lap has to be good because that's our last chance in the session to get through. So here we go, down towards turns one and two. Important to keep the car nice and tight. We then get back on the gas as we now make our way into the S section. And this is all about, you know, having that confidence to throw the car really in sixth gear and hope for it to stick. You can see here doing a really good job of, you know, keeping those S's nice and tidy. Now going up through the Dunlop curve. And here is where the mistake comes in. I get it a bit too wide. Go for the spin. And that is going to be the end of our lap. We style out the spin and do a nice little 360. But... That is our last chance and we're P17, so unfortunately, eventually, other cars around us improved and we finished Q1 in P19. Meanwhile, Mick Schumacher up in P10, he was one point, no, sorry, he was eight tenths quicker than me, so ridiculous. I don't know what happened, I don't know how it got so bad. I think we had the pace to get through, um, even then we had to find four tenths, which would have been a lot, you know, we would have been really, really close in terms of getting through into Q2, um, but... I think we could have maybe done it. Having said that, we just don't have the one lap pace. Um, disappointing, really. I, I don't know how it happened, but it has. And that's the reality. So we're going to be starting from P19, but we might start even further back because I'm going to use this as a chance to take some engine penalties. But first of all, guys, let's jump into an interview and let's see what Claire has to say. You won't be starting at the front of the pack. Are you worried? Um, obviously not ideal, but we'll try and make it work anyway. We've got... A good car for a reason, so we'll give it our best shot. Are you happy with your performance today? Not really. Um, no, Q1 is unacceptable. Um, we need to try and improve. Great. Well, that's everything. We then move into the rivalry breakdown and you can see Charles Leclerc does outscore us here today. Um, but still, we're looking good. This is the final race of the rivalry. So unless we have an absolute disaster of a Grand Prix, we should be able to win that rivalry versus Charles Leclerc and get a nice acclaim boost. Also worth noting, in terms of acclaim, no real changes to both myself, Mick Schumacher or the team as a whole. So hopefully we can make some big changes in the race. And finally, guys, just to confirm it before we get underway, you can see on screen we are going to go for the engine change. We're going to use the last of our 
our remaining components and we're going to take two extra ones uh, the energy store and the control electronics and with this now we should easily be able to get to the end of the season um, but yeah we're going to take a penalty it should give us a nice power boost as well so we should be really competitive on the straights hopefully in the race and I'm looking forward to it because a fresh engine is going to make a massive difference for us but guys stay tuned the race is going to be wild qualifying was disappointing but hopefully we can make up for it in the race on uh, the way they go gearbox change as well we're now going to jump into the Japanese Grand Prix Welcome along then to the magnificent Suzuka International Circuit, a stone's throw away from Isa Bay in the beautiful Japanese countryside. What surprises lie in wait for us today in the Japanese Grand Prix? We're southwest of the city of Nagoya today at the unique figure of eight Suzuka circuit. 3.6 miles and 18 corners make up a lap here with average speeds approaching 136 miles per hour. DRS will be available, of course, into the potential passing opportunity at turn one, although the best place for overtaking will be through 130R and into the final chicane. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Why don't we start by talking about Valtteri Bottas? They need second or better to ensure they stay in contention for the title. Anything outside of that and their fate is no longer in their hands. The key now will be to keep in the right mindset. We've seen time and again that things go wrong if you just try and do the minimum. Not necessarily because of the pressure, but because it's different to your usual approach. They'll need to avoid that and stay focused today. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Ricardo, Perez, Sebastian Vettel and Schumacher, Sainz, Norris, Stroll and Antonio Giovinazzi, Leclerc, Gasly, Kimi Raikkonen and Ocon. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Verstappen, Magnussen, Roman Grosjean and Nicolas Latifi, Kvyat, Albon, Russell and Martinez. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. Okay guys, so here we go. It's race time for the Japanese Grand Prix. We start from P22. Things are looking a little bit on the ropes, I'm going to be honest with you. But we've got uh, Williams there to our left and we've got a Red Bull directly in front actually. So we'll see how it goes. And strategy wise, I'm going to be quite different this one. I'm going to try and start the race on the hard compound tyres. We'll try and go on to the soft tyres later. I, I know maybe a soft, um, sorry, a medium soft is possible. Um, but it's pretty marginal, so I'm going to play it safe. You know, I'm just going to go on the hard tyre because it could be a safety car, VSC, you just don't know. And I feel like if I can switch the hard tyre on and find some pace and some rhythm, we could be pretty competitive, especially, you know, if you take into account, like, if that tyre does work, we are going to be looking really good later on on the mediums or even the soft tyre. So fuel-wise, I'm actually going to underfuel the car. With this brand new engine, we're going to run 0 0.5 negative. And I want to try and be, again, competitive on the hard tyre. Therefore, we're going to run a bit less fuel. And we're going to see how it goes. I can't change the setup, so we're kind of locked in on that regard. So we're going to have to try and, um, you know, do the best we can with a bad situation. But hopefully, the car is a bit better in race trim on maybe harder tyres. Either way, guys, it's time for my favourite race of the season, the Japanese Grand Prix. Let's get into the action. Right then, here we go. Let's see what kind of start we get. Gonna get the revs to about 11,000 RPM. Lights out and away we go. Trying to get a good launch there. Doesn't quite work out for us, but we do find a bit of space on the outside. As we go down towards turn one, we're gonna go around the outside of Russell and Albon, to be fair. We pick up some understeer though, that allows Albon back through. We're gonna see if we can stay ahead of Russell. Russell's still hanging in there. We're still side by side with him. But we just get in front and uh, clear the Williams. Looks like we've got Albon in front, just behind the Tifi. So there could be some hold up here. Just going to be cautious. Looks like everybody is on the soft compound tyres. So it's good to know. We're going to be at a big disadvantage here. Everyone's braking very early. So we're going to use that to go down the inside of Alex Albon here. Into Degna too. Let's see if we can try and get another couple of cars into the hairpin. The AI breaks so early here. We can definitely send it yellow flag although i believe it's just because the cars are going slowly can we clear magnuson yes we do so we're up to p17 nice little dive bomb into the hairpin with the ai of course very cautious through there using the fresh power unit i can see the, the difference in power already as we really closed up to grosjean there now the question is can we hang on you know that's going to be the real challenge can we hold on to the drs 
I'm expecting to struggle even against these guys on these tires. Having said that though, look at the speed we've got here. We may be able to just put a move on Grosjean here into the final chicane. What an explosive first lap around the outside. We go at the Casio Triangle inside through the second left-hander. And we're through up into P16. So a great opening lap in this race. And we've got Verstappen P14. So things are looking very positive already after one lap. Crucially, we've got a few cars between myself and Alex Albon behind. So again, he's going to struggle to catch up to us. So we haven't got to worry about Alex for now. But let's see if we can use the lighter car and uh, make a bit of progress here in this race. Let's see if I can claw back and uh, get myself onto the back of Ocon. That would be really, really nice if we could. Oh my goodness, mate. Whoa, that was a bit too close for comfort there. Almost ran straight into the back of Ocon. Looks like the AI very early on the brakes into the hairpin. Good news as well. We've got ourselves within DRS range. We've actually got some okay pace. Um, Bottas, I believe, did a 27.6 on that last lap. And that was the fastest lap. So we're only 1.4 off on the hard compound tyres. So it's actually quite impressive to be fair. It's better than I expected. And like I said, we are within DRS range here. Just got to make sure I keep the DRS enabled because uh, we're just dropping out of range here as Arcon is looking for a move on Verstappen, but we should be okay. Both Alphas seemingly struggling for pace a little bit, which is causing this little hold up. So we'll see how that goes. Verstappen again a bit loose there out the final corner. You saw that losing under traction. Let's see what happens here between Arcon and Max down towards turn one. The AI not the best in terms of, you know, behaving into the first corner. They can be a bit strange at times, but this time it's a clean move. Either way, I'm actually quite happy here. I think we can definitely work our way towards the top 10 as the laps tick over, as that will help us out on our tyres. I had a pretty good exit there, actually. I might just be able to challenge Max into Spoon with the ERS on. I have a little look, but didn't quite get the run I wanted, but it's not over yet. We could still challenge into the Casio Triangle, the final chicane. I feel really quick though, I can't lie, the car feels competitive in the race. I think the new engine, I can notice the power difference. Here we go, we're coming through, we're going to try and get past Max here. Oh, Max was very defensive there. I always love it when the AI really defend hard, love to see that from them. That's going to put him offline, and we're going to get a great chance here. Even though Max has DRS, we're coming through. We've got the difference in speed. Look at that. We blast past. It's easy. And we're up into P15. The Alpha is battling up ahead. Bit of contact, bit of bargy bargy going on. Let's see what happens here. They're going to lose so much time with Ocon just lurking behind them. Look at this. This could get very tasty. Looks like one of the Alphas are on the medium tire, which explains why they're a bit slow on pace. They're still side by side here up through Dunlop. This is insane. Ocon just trying to find a way through, but the Alphas are making the track super wide. I thought about going down the inside of the Degna there on Ocon, but we'll hang back. We'll try and get him into the hairpin, maybe. That'll be a nice little move. Let's see what happens here. Down the inside of Ocon. Can we get past him here? Yes, we can. We get the traction down. So it's Giovinazzi here on these medium tyres. Let's try and get past, and then uh, we'll try and dispatch Raikkonen as quick as possible. Into Spoon we go. Seems like we've got some very good straight line speed, so I want to use that to make the overtakes. Here we go, overtake enabled. The car is so efficient as well, we're barely using any juice. We're catching up a bit too much here, so I'm going to go down to Lee Mix. So I get some momentum. Here we go, we're going to go to the outside. Around the outside of Giovinazzi here, trying to go late on the brakes. Lovely stuff. P13, that's what I'm talking about. Kimi Raikkonen up next for P12. Let's go, boys. We're quick. I'm on the hunt. I feel competitive. I want to try and use this pace to make a difference in this race. Kimi's trying to pull away here. He's got some pretty good pace, actually. And we're catching up to the cars ahead. There's a bit of a train of cars. And we're going to set a new personal best. Only a couple of tenths now off the fastest lap into the 127s. You've got both Mercedes out front. And I think Schumacher's up there as well on P3. But after that, there is a big old train behind Mick Schumacher. So it's literally a train that goes all the way up to the podium. So this could get spicy. We've got Gasly in front battling with a Ferrari, I think. And Kimi's just dragging us along. Arcon out of the RS range. This has been such a good race so far. Actually, I've surprised myself genuinely. I did not expect this at all. All right, here we go. Let's get this move on. Kimi Raikkonen done and dusted. A little bit loose, out of spoon. Not the cleanest exit. I don't think I'm going to challenge him into the final chicane. I'm going to wait until the pitch straight. I'll use enough overtake to get within range and get nice and tight and close to him. Here we go. 
27.4. New fastest lap from Lewis Hamilton. So that's how far we were. Not actually not that far, to be fair, from the fastest lap. Only half a second off. All right, let's get this moved on. Let's see if we've got the juice to get this done on the straight. Look at the speed difference. We're absolutely flying. Kimi doesn't defend the inside, so we're going to take it and get back onto the racing line in time. And just like that, P12 is now ours. We've got a nice three-car battle up the road here, which would get us into the points. Unbelievable. Personal best middle sector. We're absolutely flying on this lap, thanks to the overtake on Kimi with the DRS on the main straight. Here we go then. We're getting very close now to these guys. I'm actually pretty close to a fastest lap as well, which we actually hit. There we go. Look at that. I did use quite a bit of VRS on that one, but still, it goes to show the pace is actually really good, and we're getting ourselves into this race now. If we keep this pace up, this battle in front is really making it attractive for me to get into the points as well. I've just checked. It's a Mercedes 1-2. Mick Schumacher running in third place and actually quite comfortably. He's got a bit of a gap to Ricardo in P4. So at the minute, Mick is on for his first ever podium in this My Team career mode. Meanwhile, Gasly and Stroll are bouncing away as Bottas takes away our fastest lap and Mick comes into the pit lane. Here we go. Mick is coming in for his stop. We're going to gain a handful of places as a bunch of cars are in the pit lane. Let's see if we can try and put some pressure on Stroll this lap and try and get by. It looks like Stroll won't be pitting because Perez stayed out for another lap and I'm expecting Perez to box so we're going to have to get past Lance here. Let's be patient. Again, we'll try and get him on the pit straight so that we get the DRS. We're gaining, you can see the speed difference. The fresh engine, I just can't believe how powerful it is and uh, what a difference it's making to just the overall pace. As Stroll locks up there, we almost run to the back of him as close as you can get, that was. There we go, Leclerc pits. We're going to see if we can get past Stroll here and make light work a bit. Here we go. We're going to the racing line. Both Mercs out front on mediums, so they're going for a different strategy. So we're now up to P3 in this race and cruising now. We've got some clean air. Let's use it to try and push and uh, see if we can maintain a good pace in these tyres. That's the key part of the race now. We've got to get to lap 16 and we'll go for the mediums. I've already decided I'm not going to go for the softs because the softs seem to drop away a lot. So we'll go for mediums and we'll still have the advantage over everybody else because everyone is running the hard tyres, I believe. So we should be quicker as well in the next stint. So I'll tell you what, we could challenge for a podium here. I really believe we could do that if we keep this pace up. Bottas 27-0, new fastest lap. We're coming through on a personal best as well, so we're trying to match the leader's pace. Obviously, we know the Mercs are a lot quicker as a car, but we're not a million miles away, 27.3, as Stroll pits behind us. So we're going to be by ourselves. Like I said, we've got to focus on our own pace now and trying to run consistent. I've managed to get my fuel on target in that first stint whilst making the overtake, so that's done now, so we can definitely focus on running the engine maybe in a slightly higher mode in one or two laps time just want to try and get over target now a little bit on fuel and we should be good to push oh okay lewis pitts quite an early stop actually only 12 laps on mediums but he's in anyway so uh he's going to the hard compound tire schumacher now back up to p5 on those hard tires so we're going to use schumacher as a reference in terms of the the gap hopefully driven actually pitts so we can get a better understanding but for now p2 Going pretty tardily in this race. Bottas should be pitting this lap. And there we have Valtteri now in the pit lane in the other Mercedes. Valtteri has to win today to uh, keep his title hopes alive, I believe. Across the line, purple sector three from us. And to be fair, we're matching our personal best, even without that big DRS boost on the pit straight. So we're getting quicker as the fuel burns away and we're keeping the pace up, which is extremely important. Giovinazzi pits as well. So we're going to get a much better understanding as to where Mick Schumacher is, what the gap is, and what kind of pace we have to do. At the minute, we're pretty much identical on lap times, so that's very encouraging. Mick has Ricardo for company, it looks like. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Ricardo actually overtakes Mick Schumacher there. So those two are battling, which is good news for us in terms of maybe catching them potentially at the end of the race. Schumacher is dropping away now. Perez has overtaken him. But Perez is on the medium, so maybe he's two-stopping this race. Either way, we're still going strong here. I'm going to pit this lap anyway. I'm going to cut the stint short because Lewis done 12 laps on mediums and Bottas done 13. So we don't have to go that long. So we're going to box this lap and confirm it. Confirmed. We'll receive you at the end of this lap. There we go. Box for the medium tyres. Here we are then. It's time for the in lap. Matching my personal best through the second sector. I'm giving it absolutely everything. I know there's some people saying, why don't you just wait for the soft tyres? But 
The softs don't really last around here. You saw the drop off on the AI at the end of the first stint, and also they just overheat very easily. So I'd rather just push, like on the hard tires, just go flat out on the mediums every single lap. I think it's a much better strategy. We can get off these tires earlier, which we have done, and we'll be on much better rubber. So here we go then. Key area in the race. We need a quick stop. Release, release. 2.4. Here comes Ricardo, Perez, Vettel and Schumacher. Can we rejoin behind Schumacher? Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. Oh yes we can. Look at that. All the way up to P7. What an overcut. Ahead of both McLarens on medium tyres. Schumacher's dropped down to P6. So he's had a bit of a poor second stint because he was in P3 in the first one. So Mick losing time on those hard tyres. But we are right in the mix here. And I fancy a podium on these tyres. We can push flat out to the end, no worries about tyres, you know, overheating or tyre wear. We can just absolutely go for it and hopefully pick up a fastest lap as well in the process, maybe with these tyres. So let's try and save a bit of fuel so we can push for a, a fastest lap. I think it's worth noting actually on the pace as well before we continue. Um, laps number 12, not 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, the last four laps we did on those tyres, once everyone had done their first stop, those four key laps were all within a tenth of each other. That's how competitive we were. And all of those laps were within a tenth or a tenth and a half of my personal best. So that's the kind of pace we needed. Combined with the 2.4 second stop, that has worked out beautifully for us. Bollards have disappeared. Either way, we're now within DRS of Mick Schumacher here. Perez setting a new fastest lap. It's going to be close, but we don't quite beat it. That's okay though. We're not going for the fastest lap just yet. I'm trying to see if I can get past some traffic. First of all, let's get past Mick here, who to be fair seems to have stabilised with his pace, but he doesn't have uh, podium pace, which is a shame, but that's the reality, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Ricardo's been overtaken now by the Ferrari, so even Ricardo's slipping back a little bit, and the Ferrari ascending through the order. Right, let's get this move on Mick Schumacher done and dusted, and dispatch of him, and try and fight our way through. I can already see the comments saying, get rid of Mick Schumacher, he's not good enough. And to be fair, that may happen, you never know. You don't know what the future holds. Either way, let's focus on getting this move done. We're going to be patient again. And we're going to try and get him on the pit straight. We're just going to close up here through the chicane. Ricardo actually and the Ferrari in front losing a lot of time here. Both myself and Mick are really catching up. Oof, getting a bit of oversteer there. But here we go. Vettel new fastest lap. We're going to beat that. There we go. Easy move ahead of Mick Schumacher now up to P6. Right, let's push on now after Danny Rick and Sebastian Vettel. Perez, I believe, has to pit in P3, so we can kind of forget about that. Bottas takes away our fastest lap. I don't think so, Sunshine. I think we're going to get that one back. Thank you very much. I want that extra point. I really do. Half a second up here. We're flying. 26.3. We're closing in on Ricardo now. He's got DRS on Vettel, so it's making it quite hard to close up to him. Well, we finally have the RS on Ricardo. That's good news, but now we've got to try and get past, which is a whole different battle in itself. Still waiting for Perez to pit. At this rate, he could be going to the end, because I thought he would have pit by now. So maybe Perez is actually going to the end of those mediums, which, is, which would be very surprising. He would have gone for a soft medium strategy, but then again, the racing point is pretty good on his tyres. So we may have to make live work with these guys to ascend to the podium here. This is so awkward, trying to find a way past because Ricardo's just getting a beautiful toe and he's just being dragged along by a Seb Vettel. It's making it really hard for me to get close. We are catching Perez though. Perez's tires are fading. He's losing a lot of time. We just don't really make a dent on the straight to Ricardo. But Ricardo, to be fair, really closing up to Seb here. This is going to really come to life any second. I really think so. We're a bit closer this time. We're going to keep the overtake mode engaged as I think we could get the run on Ricardo here into the final chicane. Down the inside we go. Ricardo locks up and we breeze through. I think Ricardo wasn't expecting that. Nice move. Can we get Vettel as well? The two for one special. Do we have enough straight line speed versus a Ferrari? Oh yes we do. Look at this. Look at the speed. Down the inside we go. It is done. P4. And now we can chase after Perez. 1.9 up the road. Let's go boys. What a move. What a double move should I say. Let's go. Some That's not good. Schumacher's running in good points, but unfortunately, he might lose them. Meanwhile, purple sector two. We set an improved fastest lap. We didn't really gain that much in the final sector, unfortunately, but 
We're now closing in on Perez. Vettel is out of the RS range. Perez has picked up his pace though. This is going to be so close. Going on to the final lap, the gap is 1.1, 1 1.2, .1, but we're closing it down. We're getting closer to that DRS. If I can just grab it, which I don't think I will. I think I may have just missed out. Perez used a bit of engine juice. Meanwhile, we lose our fastest lap to the Mercedes cars, which is a shame. Right, last lap of the race. Purple sector three. We've got to give it everything here. We can definitely challenge Perez into the final chicane. This has to be perfect. Unfortunately, guys, Perez is too quick. He's up to his pace. I'm pushing flat out to the limit here, but I just can't quite challenge. I'm going to run out of juice. And to be fair, Perez has actually pulled away a little bit on this lap. We'll keep trying, but I think it's over. Bot has 25-3, new fastest lap. So that's that done as well. Here we go, final chicane. Got a bit hot on the brakes there, but instead, still, it's going to be P4. And that is an incredible recovery drive, and I'll take that. What a race. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. That's a spectacular victory then, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. Well then guys, there we go, the results are in, and to be fair, it's been a great race, I can't lie. I'm really genuinely shocked at how great the car was today. Um, I don't know what's happened compared to qualifying, because I, can't, I couldn't change the setup. And um, I just think the setup obviously works better in the race, not so good over one lap. I mean, we didn't maximise qualifying, we should have got Q2 and then, who knows, maybe we could have scraped a Q3, but generally speaking, we weren't that quick. And um, yeah, we had to definitely do some damage limitation, but what a performance, I actually exceeded my expectation. And I think we actually performed better Starting from the back with the brand new engine on the hard medium tire strategy rather than like getting to the top 10 starting on softs and going on to the hard tires. I genuinely think we were quicker that way. So a really great day at the office and uh, it's Bottas who wins today with the fastest lap ahead of Hamilton. Perez holds on for P3. We finish in fourth place ahead of Ricardo. Vettel signs Leclerc. Schumacher in the end only P9 having issues with his car at the very end which is a real shame for him. And then we've got Lando P10 uh, running off the points. Ocon misses out along with Stroll, Gasly, Raikkonen, and Kofia. Giovinazzi, Albon, Verstappen, uh, Magnussen, Latifi, Grosjean and Russell. No DNFs, both Red Bull cars 17th and 18th, which is an absolute shocker by their standards. We then move into the driver standings and after that race, we are still in third place. And uh, we are just under 50 points behind Bottas, so just under two race wins away. We're actually closer to Valtteri than what Valtteri is to Lewis. And uh, the gap between those two, 62 points. I believe Hamilton could win it in the next race. Um, meanwhile, we've got Leclerc in fourth place. He's just outside 40 points behind us. He's 38 points adrift, I believe. So we've got a good gap over Leclerc now, and I feel really confident we can actually hang on to this third place. Meanwhile, Mick Schumacher still 15th in the standings. It should have been probably P14 or even 13 for him here today, but he missed out on some crucial points due to his car letting him down at the end. We then move into the constructors, and we are in third place. And I think I can say now we've secured the bag. We're, we've got over 100 points on racing point, and with, I believe, four races to go. It's pretty much done. So really, really happy and happy to see that the car has progressed so much this season. But guys, that is it for the race here at Japan today. We're now going to move into the laptop and put on some more upgrades. Okay, so looking at the rivalry breakdown, we outscore Mr. Charles Leclerc once again. And that means we have wrapped up the rivalry and we have beaten Charles Leclerc, which is pretty insane to be fair. We then move on to the Acclaim, and with that rivalry victory, we actually move up to level 15, and uh, we actually now have a 52% combined Acclaim bonus. So 
we are really pushing on here and leveling up in this my team career mode make sure can now close to level 12 we also get a full payout of all of our bonuses with our sponsors as well which is great news and also zero damage deductions which is great so a perfect weekend pretty much all round and i can't complain as we now just shy of 10 million dollars as we now move into the laptop okay so we have 10 days until the us grand prix and that track is one that i've struggled with in the past so we want to try and improve and add some upgrades on first of all though we've got a massive um space on the calendar to try and assign a load of activities so first of all we're going to go for a chassis equipment upgrade we're then going to dash on probably i'm thinking title sponsor venue opening to improve driver acclaim um but at the same time i want to do some other things as well so um i am tempted to do g-force training again to improve mixed pace um, we've got four days remaining and I think the best thing to do really is to spread as many activities as possible. So we'll go aero team building as well. And we'll do a sponsor event for a fundraiser to improve the team acclaim as well. So our activities have been assigned. And we're now going to move back into the timeline. So you can see on the 13th, we've got an intercooler upgrade, which should help us out. And we're going to try and add some more. So we have 1,100 points. Let's see what we can purchase. So uh, looking at the options here. We've got a minor one for the chassis, to be fair, which might help us out for the cockpit weight reduction. So I don't mind uh, spending on that, to be fair. Even the minor ones now are quite expensive. We're going to try and rush it, see if we get a bit lucky. Um, if not, we'll just have it on for the next race anyway. So uh, let's see how that goes. And I'm going to save up a bit of money because uh, there could be some action over the winter. So let's start skipping ahead on this calendar. Unfortunately, the intercooler has failed. So we're going to have to wait until we get some more R&D points to be able to repurchase the upgrade. So for now, we're going to have to push on without it and hope that we can get that on for the car for the following race after USA. Now, we do have some good news. The rushed chassis upgrade has actually arrived, which is great. So we're just going to quickly now repurchase the failed engine one because we did get some extra R&D points so we can get that onto the car. That will arrive after the US Grand Prix. So that will be on the car in time for the Mexican Grand Prix, which is the race after. So there we go. Let's skip ahead now to the US Grand Prix. And there we go. Then we are ready for the next race in USA. And it's going to be another big one for us because, again, we're on that chase to try and secure third place in the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships. So uh, we go again, guys, in the next episode. But if you guys enjoyed this one here today, drop me a like. And also subscribe if you are new, guys, for daily F1 content on the channel. And hit the notification button, guys, to be notified when new videos do go live so you guys don't miss them and you see them straight away as soon as they're released. And also on screen right now, guys, if you want to check out the two videos, then by all means do so but guys that's it for me here today and i'll see you all next time for the fourth from last race of the season for the u.s grand prix but until then it's goodbye from me